Hey, hey guys, Christo here, and yes indeed, what you're looking at on your screen is the Windows 8 start screen. For those of you living under a rock, Windows 8 is Microsoft's newest operating system that they released just this past Friday, October 26th, 2012. So, uh, yesterday I got the chance to go, and yesterday being Saturday, day after Friday, I got the chance to go to the Houston Galleria here in Houston, Texas, and uh, visit the Microsoft Store. I wanted to get a feel with... Uh, what the Surface with Windows RT, more specifically the touch cover, and what, what they were like, and then also kind of see the launch devices that Microsoft was promoting to be used with their new flagship OS, Windows 8. Uh, really quick, brief summary, the, Windows, the Surface feels great, it's solid, its construction is world class. The device itself, Windows RT, I think might actually work pretty well for a lot of people. I'm holding out for the Surface Pro, and then the touch cover, like many of the reviews out there are saying, it actually works pretty well. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, little, you know, I was a little concerned, how does how's this going to work? There's no keys that you press. But um, even for the about a minute that I used it, I could see myself after a day or two's worth of of using it, really getting used to that membrane keyboard with no um, no travel, no distance in the key press. Um, it works amazingly well. doesn't feel cumbersome. Uh, the only issue is when you first start typing, you might want to press too hard because you're used to pressing a key. Well, you don't have to. You're just basically tapping on the surface. But uh, So that being said, uh, with Windows 8, there's a lot to to see a lot to talk about this is by no means an in-depth full review of the operating system i really intend this just to be a general overview as i put in the title uh, of what windows 8 is what it looks like uh, certain use cases a few features that i feel important in this uh, new operating system that microsoft's put out so let's get into the actual start screen as you can see here uh, it really wants to scroll left or right the start screen is very I guess what I'm going to call pivot based. Um, that's what they called it in Windows Phone, the technique of it scrolling left and right, the pivots. So it really wants to scroll. On this laptop, it works. You can drag the mouse to the left and right, and it'll push or pull uh, the start screen. Likewise, you can also use the scroll bar that you can see on the bottom. You can click and drag that left and right if that's what you really want to do. That being said, um, Windows 8 really wants to be touched. Some people use that phrase, uh, touch first. It doesn't require a touch interface, but it really excels when you have a touch interface. Um, specifically because of all the horizontal scrolling and the touch gestures and things like that. So, obviously, Windows 8 is going to work best on new hardware. Uh, tablets, that's, that's a given. Uh, new desktops and laptops that have uh, touch screens built into the displays. Um, the video I did yesterday real quick at the Microsoft store was using an Acer laptop that had a um, laptop built in. And you can see me using the scroll bar there, dragging, clicking and dragging. Um, but as well, um, I think after that, besides new, having new hardware that has touch screen enabled devices, um, I think a desktop with a mouse with a scroll wheel is going to be your next best experience with Windows 8 because that scroll wheel, that allows you to do it. It gives you that scrolling. Uh, and, and since you can't swipe left and work right, it gives you an easy way to scroll through these pivots, these uh, windows, the screens. Um, laptops, if you have a, mic a mouse with a scroll wheel as well, it's going to work really well, I think, personally. And then after that, legacy laptops, they're going to work well, it's going to be good. The Windows experience, in my opinion, will still be good. It's just, it might take a little bit of difference to actually have that, get used to that feeling of having to scroll. I use a touchpad, a bamboo touch on my Lenovo to do all this because it's just easier. Uh, the touchpad on my laptop just isn't as responsive. Some of the, some of the older laptops, they still have uh, touchpads that allow for multi-finger input and gestures, and those should work just as well. Uh, so, but overall, if you're looking at getting a new system, definitely don't hesitate with Windows 8, uh, especially if it has a touchscreen built into it. There are some laptops out there that start around 500, decent prices. You're going to get a great experience with that touch. Again, though, you don't have to touch it. Um, if you're upgrading, it's going to be good. Just kind of 
look and see. I, I, I can't say either way which way it will work for you. The laptop I have this running on is about two years old. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad SL510. Uh, nothing to write home about. But um, overall, I have to say, even on a desktop system, it works quite well. Especially if you have multi multi monitor setup like my desktop at home. I have three monitors. It does even better than Windows 7 to manage those multi monitors. I can't emphasize that enough. So uh, let's get to the start screen. This is the area that most people are either loving or hating or they're somewhere in between. The line tiles, you can rearrange them however you like. It's not like the start menu, you just have a list. This is something dynamic. All you have to do is just click on it, hold it, and you drag it. Now if you drag out, you see how it kind of flows out. If you have a lot of applications, this gives you the chance to pick them and choose them. So let's place it right there. Like right there, what else can we move and click? Um, actually, first let me show you um, if you want to kind of scroll back out, you'll notice uh, there towards the bottom of the right screen, it almost looks like a little minimize button. Uh, that zooms out. Now, when you have just a few applications, not a big deal, but if you want to see, you can have this huge long list. This gives you the option to zoom out and then zoom back in where you want to be. Um, but again, it's really easy. All you have to do is just click and drag and you're there to go. So. Here you see the desktop application, just like Windows 8 runs, uh, just like you would expect in Windows 7. Uh, you get your screen resolution personalized there. This is your standard right click menu on the desktop. And if you use Windows 7, it's going to look almost exactly the same. Uh, biggest difference is going to be the window uh, UI, the GUI of Windows. And uh, let's give it a second. Let's go ahead and skip four. So you get the views, the large, medium, small. Like I said, it's all the same. So let's see. Let's go ahead and right click. Let's select screen resolution. Let's go bring up your window. See what I'm saying? Windows 7, it looks the same. It feels the same. It works the same. Um, there's just a lot of under the hood improvements like the file dialog transfer, uh, file transfer dialog. I really like it. I won't be showing you this, that in this video, but it gives you a lot more information. And then you'll notice that the screen UI here, it's very flat. They got rid of the arrow glass and the shadows and the reflections and things like that. Personally, again, for myself, I prefer this. So in the desktop environment, you're going to feel very much at home. You can install pretty much whatever applications you could install in Windows 7, they're going to work here in Windows 8. Okay, so this is all about the corners, right? If you scroll to the top left, usually you would see your most, your last used application. You scroll down, you'd have a list of what you're running. Don't have that right now. Scroll to the right, you see you're going to bring up your charm bars. This way you search, settings, things like that, devices that's connected to your computer. Right now I don't have anything. You also see the time, the battery life. That's important uh, if you have uh, a tablet, something like that. Uh, your share option here also, it's dependent on what application you're using. Sometimes you can share different pages or objects with people. So let's go ahead and minimize that. Don't know how that came up. Okay, so that's the charm bar there. You can access that with using the mouse to the right side of the screen, usually the top right. Uh, you can also use that if you have a legacy device uh, with Windows key and C. That brings up the charm bar. Some of the newer laptops, and um, you'll see the devices right here. But anyway, like I was saying, some of the newer laptops and desktops or keyboards are actually going to have a charm key. Likewise, if you're using a tablet, you just kind of swipe in from the right to the left, off screen from the right side into the left, and that brings out the bar. Uh, also, uh, you can ramp your settings. Uh, settings are application dependent. So you'll see here it's a desktop, you see the control panel, things like that. You can change the different settings for the PC uh, depending what application you have running, uh, especially the Windows Store applications. That's going to show different settings that you can change for those. And I might show you some later. All the controls, they work great either for touch or for uh, mouse and keyboard control. So, um, you know, nothing uh, too spectacular, nothing good or bad otherwise uh, obviously power sleep shut down restart things like that so it's pretty straightforward it works great T touch or mouse keyboard uh, no complaints here all right also the bottom left probably the most important that's your button for the start screen a lot of people you'll scroll down to the all the way to the bottom left and they kind of want to move over to click that it's a button you no know, that's just showing you that that's the click area for the start screen to scroll to the bottom left 
and click. Don't try to click that uh, image. See, just click on the bottom left of the screen. It brings you to your start screen. Uh, also, you can use just hit your Windows key on your keyboard or the Windows button on a tablet, depending what you're using. Might be a little different. Also, on the charm, you can hit the start uh, screen there on the uh, charm bar there. So remember, just scroll to the whole bottom left and click. Don't try to move your mouse to click that little uh, menu image. All right, so back to the start screen. There are, in Windows 8 in general, there's a few different uh, types of apps. One's what we're calling the Windows Store apps, which are the ones that only Windows RT uses. And then there's your regular desktop applications, the ones that you run in, like Windows 7. This is where most of the confusion is coming from. So you see here, we've gone to the store. And it's like a little shopping bag. Uh, it says store in the icon. There's a variety of different... Um, applications right now at launch the biggest criticism is there's not that many apps for the Windows Store and it's probably more of a criticism on Windows RT than it is for Windows 8 the full-fledged operating system because in Windows 8 you can install whatever you want just like it was in 7 Windows 7 there is no store so I mean in Windows 8 your your choice of applications is anything that's made to run for Windows um, but again, you do have the Windows Store. Uh, you've got a whole wealth of applications here. So it's like uh, Rowey here in the uh, social area. This is the screen that comes up. You see it's got the review ratings. It's the price. It has option to install it. So far, I haven't seen any that say try um, like it does in the Windows Phone Marketplace. But either way, so and you've got the screenshots here. Uh, and then you can also click where it says details up in the top. And uh, the details, what this shows you, is kind of what it requires, uh, what the permissions it needs to use, what processors, what uh, CPUs it, uh, it uh, requires. So specifically, this is what going to show you. Is it ARM only? Does it? Can it be run in ARM? For the most part, everything you see in the Windows Store is going to be able to be run on the ARM system as well as Intel, uh, well, x86 and 64-based um CPUs and here's the reviews so you can read through them you know take reviews as they are just in any kind of reviewing system so now the thing about this and the reason why most of all these will most likely run an arm because this is the store where Windows RT gets all their exclusive apps since you can't sideload uh, your normal desktop applications into it so you hit install and it, you see you I don't know if you saw it noticed it, the little progress dots up top that's a real if those of you who use Windows Phone will be real familiar with that, just let you know that something's happening. Top right, you can see it's saying it's installing ROE. Um, so let's scroll through the rest of these. Now you see here on my laptop, I'm using the middle click and drag since my scroll is just kind of wonky. Uh, oh, see, ROE's been installed in the top right, gives you a little toast notification. And Cocktail Flow, if any of you who like to drink, this is my absolute favorite. It's one of my favorite apps on the Windows Phone, and they do a pretty darn good job on uh, Windows 8 as well. Let's just look at a, a pretty app. So, um, You know, over time, I expect there to be quite a few more applications being released. Um, so that's probably the biggest hurdle right now for Windows RT. For Windows 8, not so much. This is just kind of, my opinion, icing on the cake. Uh, doesn't take away from the operating system. So uh, how does it handle application switching? The Alt tab in Windows 8 works just the same. So Alt tab, scroll through it. You can do the Windows tab, and what that does is it brings up the application bar here on the left, see, and hit and tab will switch between. Only got one open, the desktop and the uh, store, and then you can go back to the start menu. So it's just switching between those two. Uh, see, it's like desktop, proc there. Scroll up to the top left, you can see the little, this is what it looks like. You just click in the top left, just like you did in the top bottom for the start screen. The top left will show you the most recent application. You just click it, it goes, you can see you can just keep clicking, and uh, so it's going to scroll back and forth. If you have a tablet, you can actually just scroll from the right side out and into the, on the left side, into the right, just so you scroll in and swipe it, and that actually just swipes the applications back and forth between your last ones. Obviously, I can't do that here, so... Uh, here we're back to the start screen, and let's go to open up Metro Twit here. This is my favorite Twitter application. Now, the Windows Store apps, uh, they're going to show full screen. And uh, here you can see it's got my timeline, my mentions. There's a little spot for the advertisements. 
and it's generally a very clean I can also have my direct messages showing there but for demo purposes I'm not gonna show you my private messages uh -huh, I know <laughs> but anyway uh, nothing to really share there I just don't remember what's there so don't want to risk it let's see we also have the Bing finance let that open. That open generally quick. I found that um, first time use it takes a little bit of time to um, load and after that it loads pretty quick. There we go. They really like pictures in Windows 8, um, especially the Windows uh, uh, store apps. They really like to have some beautiful shots in the background that scroll with you as you change their news. Being finance, you know, it's uh, it's it's a finance application. If you're an accountant or investor or something, hey, you know, have at it. It does display information in a pretty in a pretty way. Uh, you see, you can see the pivots. It's going to scroll to the right. Um, again, if you're using your touch interface, this is going to work really well. It works well with just the mouse, and you'll also notice. You think you can use a page up and down to kind of switch between. Uh, I think you can use left and right too. It's not quite working right now though, but. Anyways, so it looks pretty, not gonna lie. So forget that this click drag is really sensitive the farther you drag out. So there are advertisements. Click it, it's gonna bring up a video. It's elegant, it's not in your face if you really wanna watch it, but let's, I don't want to. Okay, close that. Okay, so let's go back here. You've got some news, there's some videos that you can watch. That those are gonna change periodically based on what's going on in the stock market and stuff. Uh, this is gonna be your watch list. I believe you can click this watch list here. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's going to open up. You can see your full list of all the different companies and stocks that you want to watch. Uh, go ahead and click the add. Let's go ahead and add Safeway. Okay, let's see, that's the company I work for. And that's 16 point. Okay, maybe not the best. I don't know. It's a grocery industry, it's not the liveliest of stocks. But, anyways, you can click it. It's going to bring up your more detailed information of the company. Uh, here you see the the graph how it's been uh, performing over the previous uh, what's this day you can change it month day weekly month year the whole thing five years so obviously the search function your charm bar it is application specific just like your settings so open up there let's type in LUV love for Southwest let's click that so it's automatically searching within the Bing finance it's not doing a general search across uh, the entire computer system. So go ahead and click that. Let's see. You see right here? There we go. Let's go ahead and click that. And yeah. So Southwest Airlines company. Um, that's a lot of red. Nevertheless, I get cheap flights, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, but again, uh, it's really easy, very user friendly. It works fantastic. Uh, scroll over. Again, I'm going to keep probably doing this this whole demo. Take it easy. There we go. So it's going to have different news, what's going on with the company. Uh, it's going to show different stats, historical data, um, just a, a wealth of information in being finance. It's a very pretty interface. Okay, so now that I have multiple applications open, let's scroll to the top uh, left of the screen. Let's scroll to the top left and then drag your mouse down. You're going to have the application bar. You see you've got multiple apps. You can either select one. There goes Metro Twit. You can select the store. Whatever you have open, you can select, and it switches it. Just like Alt-Tab, this is just using your mouse. Scroll to the top left, and then scroll down, and that bling brings up your application bar. So it's pretty easy. just wanted to show you that. I had to wait till I had more applications open, though. Um, so, okay, scroll to, there we go, switch. And what you can do here is now you can click, and you can drag like this. And you can either replace it, or you can go to the left or the right side. And this is the cool feature that Windows RT and the Windows, the start menu, this whole new modern UI does. You can actually pin an application to the left or the right. It works best with the Windows Store apps. So you click it and drag it, and you'll see how it kind of pops to the left. It'll automatically lock, and you drop it. Most of them are going to give you a, a section here. So like with my uh, Metro Twit, it's going to show all my Twitter apps, and then I can have that running and then I can use like Bing Finance or whatever else I have in this right side of the screen I can use that just like it was normal uh, it's a really nice way that they manage the multitasking uh, something very unique that it has that 
things like the iPad or other Android based tablets for the most part don't have. It's a very elegant, very pretty, very useful way of using it. User friendly, easy to figure out. Okay, so uh, you see the slider there? You can also expand that out if you want to kind of put focus on whatever app you have on the sidebar. So you just click it and drag it to the right, or you know, if you have touch, you just slide it to the right. So let's go ahead and send a tweet here. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and type. Uh, what are we going to type? Uh, recording a video of Windows 8. Submission point. Okay, now let's go ahead and send. No, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a photo. Let's see how this works with my webcam. So I can click take photo. And do we want to allow Kitmetra use? Yes, allow. Oh, wow. Looking pretty bad. So we're going to go ahead and stop that. <laughs> we're not going to add that to the deal. Oh, actually, let's, you know what? Why not? Uh, timer. What's that do? Oh, three, two, one. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and click OK, and let's see, ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and send that tweet out to the Twitterverse, or whatever you fellas call it, or gals. I don't want to be, you know, discriminate. So, all right, it's pretty easy as that. Um, let's see. All right, well, you can take the slider again, so you see how the finance on the right side. We can go ahead and click that. You can drag that to the left if you want to bring the Bing Fagnets back to focus. Or you can just drag it all the way to the right and get rid of it altogether. Put whatever the app, in this case, Metro Twit, into full focus. You can click and drag again, Bing Finance, put it on the left side. If you want to switch it around, it really is easy to use. Uh, just slide it off to the left again, and it's gone. Waiting for you to call it back again, I suppose. So. Um, but again, this is a full screen app, and what happens if you want to close the app? There's no close button, and when you switch around, they're still running in the background. Well, you can't see my mouse here, but if you scroll up to the top, what you're going to see is a little turns a little hand icon. And you're going to click, and it's going to drag that all the way down. And if it's a tablet, you literally just swipe from the top all the way down, and it closes the application out like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Word. This is Microsoft Word 2013, the preview. It's really nice. I love it. If you get Windows RT, it comes already pre-installed on that system. It's included. You get it free of charge. So not too bad. Um, but all right, so if you look on the left side here, um, you're going to see all my your recent documents that you used. You'll notice on mine, all of them are in my SkyDrive. I use that almost exclusively, especially for all my school documents. I don't like to uh, have to be using a thumb drive, plus it blacks them up on the cloud, so I don't have to worry about losing them. So, okay, but what I really want to show you is in here in the document. Let's open up a new blank Word document. And uh, here's Word. Looks pretty just like the other ones. A flatter UI, which again, I personally love. And it's got the ribbon, all that's the same. So let's go ahead and go up here and activate my on screen keyboard. I was playing with the handwriting, but there's a variety of keyboards here. Let's go with the first one. This is your normal QWERTY keyboard. And this little option, you can actually stretch it across the entire board, so it actually takes up that bottom half of the screen. Some of you might like it. It does limit your view. You see how it literally splits the screen. Let's go ahead and put it back um, to the normal way, and that's kind of on top. It's still splitting your view, essentially, but I don't know. I kind of like this feel better. It doesn't feel like it's hogging the entire bottom half of the screen. That's me personally. So, um, obviously, this is, you know, using a touchpad, and then you go ahead and reactivate that. The little X right there can obviously, you know, removes the keyboard there. Um, obviously, I'm using a touchpad, so if you're actually using a touch interface, like a tablet or even a desktop or laptop with a touch screen. It works really well. I played with this at the Microsoft Store. It's a very nice keyboard. Backspace. Yeah, okay, it works. <laughs> so, um, you hit the numbers. I, I'm interested to see how this really works. Instead of having it like a QWERTY keyboard with the symbols overlaying and the numbers on the top row, what this does is it gives you the symbols on one side, a 10 key for the numbers. I'm interested to really try this because I can imagine it being better for me typing in 
a lot of numbers, especially in something like Excel, you're not having to move your hands back and forth across the row. You can actually 10 key. So it allows potentially the ability to input numbers a lot faster than you would with your normal layout that you see in all the other keyboards out there. Um, it's interesting design, so I'm looking forward to giving it a shot and seeing how it works exactly. So, And then, of course, you can click the little arrow button. You get different options. And if you click and hold, I'm going to imagine, just like in Windows Phone, yep, there you go. You get different symbols, different options. Um, I don't know what these are. What are those? Never even seen those. Okay, that doesn't do anything. There's that 100%. Let's see. Numbers. Okay, I'll expecting half and, and halves and things like that, but it looks like it gives you super and subscripts, which is kind of nice. And of course, a comma because you know we don't have a comma button. <laughs> we do actually, I'm kidding, there is a comma button. So, okay, that closed to that. Let's go ahead and bring that keyboard back up. And um, you'll notice here on the bottom right, there's a little uh, keyboard icon. It gives you different options. So, you have three different style of keyboards that you can use for input. And this last one actually closes the keyboard just like the X. This one's a split keyboard for thumbs, so if you're holding it on either side, uh, presumably you can use your thumbs to do all the typing. I didn't get to play with that yet. Um, hopefully it works. I can't imagine why it wouldn't. And uh, so there you got different options for people who like to use the keyboard in different varieties. And then, of course, the last, because uh, especially the Surface, but all the... Uh, tablets with Windows 8 or Windows RT should on some level support some pins, you also have the handwriting recognition, which for me has worked pretty well. So I'm going to click that. Um, now normally you'd have a, a pin that you, or a digitizer that you can actually uh, write on it, but um, of course I'm using a touchpad, so I don't have that, but let's go ahead and see uh, how this works. We're going to type Let's try to write hello in cursive using my finger. So let's see, H, okay, uh, that's not going to, E, L, and another L, and an O, it's, yeah, there you go. Yeah, gotta make it fancy, right? And insert, there you go, it recognized it, perfect. I personally haven't ever had any issues with the handwriting. I usually write in script predominantly, and a, even working with my Wacom tablet in Windows 7, it always seemed to work really well. So let's go ahead and close that. And uh, so that is uh, the screen inputs, the on-screen keyboards that Windows 8 and Windows RT have to offer. I think they're really nice. I haven't had too much experience with some of the other products out there, like the iPad or, well, I know the iPad. I like this keyboard a lot better. Um, Android's the one where I'm not sure, so, um, but as far as I can tell from my limited experience, I really, really like that keyboard. So it's going back to the start screen, and um, I'm not sure what else there is to really show you. I, I feel like that gives a pretty good general overview. Oh, one last thing. Okay, for you Minecraft players, Cubic. This is where potentially the whole uh, sideboard might work really well. Uh, they have an application I believe that you can run in like Windows 7, but this basically it shows you information on crafting res recipes, things like that. A lot of you don't play Minecraft, you probably have, either have no clue or don't even care, and that's fine. But you go ahead and grab it from the top, down like you were going to close it, Oop, there we go, and then you sprint to the, uh, walk it to the left, let's go ahead and open up, I'm open up a window as if it was Minecraft because I don't have it installed right now. And so pretend that was Minecraft, you'd be playing around. On the left side, it doesn't have to really interrupt too much of your gameplay. You've got all the recipes, all the information that you could possibly need or want and at your fingertips. So I don't know. I know there's a lot of plugins that you can get this stuff in, but for some of you, especially for me, because when it comes to enchanting, well, like the potions and things, uh, I haven't a clue what's going on. So... Yeah, a little extra, a little extra that you can give a shot. I thought I'd throw that in very, throw that in towards the end for all you Minecraft players. I haven't played as much since for a while, but anyways. So, oh, and then the arrow snap, it is still there. Yeah, let me show you the rest of this before I forget. So I've got one window on the right. You've got the item pinned to the left. Let's see, what I have my calendar up. Let's go ahead and change this and put Twitter. And okay, let's go ahead and slide this over. 
probably could do this a little quicker. I'm going to close that and open up. What do I want? Start. And yeah, let's open up Word. Open that up. So uh, and we're going to take that. We can just use the hotkeys windows left key, snap that to the left. Open your Word document. And what website will we be using? Let's say we're doing some research on. Yeah, why not? Windows 8. Let me type in a blog post. Want more information on that? Let's scroll down. Let's find Wikipedia because we know that's the book of knowledge. All knowledge on the internet ends up in Wikipedia. Let's go ahead and open that up. And there we go. And you can scroll up and down as long as you're not clicking links or dragging pages like I am. There we go. And then you can go ahead and type there and start typing and reading and watching all your tweets come in. Um, you know, it's a small screen, it takes up some real estate, but, um, yep, recording, yep, 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 and, uh, so, it's an interesting use case. I'd like to see some of the tablets out there, like the iPad, or, uh, some of the Android tablets out there do just what Windows RT can do on Surface, and eventually, well, Surface Pro isn't out yet, but there's plenty of other uh, OEMs, manufacturers are releasing full-fledged Windows 8 systems on a tablet. Uh, so I'd like to see them do what this can do. Um, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's some that can, and that's very, well, see, on the left, already got another. Uh, Andy and not go, as usual, my something, something, something. So, anyways, let's go ahead and drag that. And it's interesting, when you drag the RT to the right, you'll see the desktop's minimized, and you don't see the windows, but it's showing you all the different windows that are open. And I can't tell, but no, I, I'm kind of wishing they'd let you close the windows, kind of like it does if you hover over Windows 7 taskbar. Or Windows 8 does the same thing. You can close individually, but you can't. So let's go ahead and close these windows out. Maybe one day they'll update that and add that feature. And no, we don't want to save. And let's drag this to the right, get full screen, and then I want to close that. All right, so we're back to the start screen here. Let's go ahead and show y'all Netflix. Go we'll open that up, and while it loads, I'm sure a lot of you have either heard or watched use or of Netflix. And uh, if you're running our Windows RT, the Windows Store app, which thankfully they have now, is the only way to watch Netflix because uh, you can't watch it in the browser. Obviously, even with Windows 8, I probably will use this app as well. It's really nice. And what is that? <laughs> Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, someone's been using my account. So, all right, let's go ahead and click Beers Wars, and it's gonna bring you the obvious: their general star rating, the who's in it, information on the film. At the top you have the rating, the year it was made, how long, all that jazz. So, click Sam Calioni. He's the owner of Dogfish Head Brewery, and of course, he's this is the only movie he's in. Go ahead and click it, let it load. We're not going to play very much of this for obvious copyright reasons, but just want to kind of show you how it works. So, it turns on, starts playing, it's the intro. Yeah, it ducks. You can pin it to the left and watch it in a very small screen, but you can still watch it. Drag it to the right, and go ahead and just close it. It works pretty well. You got the general idea. So, um, in the future, I'm planning on highlighting a lot of the different apps, especially the ones that come with uh, Windows 8 and Windows RT, um, the ones made by Microsoft, and a lot of the third-party apps that people have created, hopefully. So over the next few weeks, uh, I don't know how many I'll do or how often I'll be able to do them, but um, just kind of stay touched and, and, and uh, I guess just held out and see what I have to to say about Windows 8. Overall, I have to say, though, that it's a fairly good experience. I am enjoying it so far. I'm looking forward to actually having a touch uh, touch interface, like the tablet. Um, hopefully the Surface Pro, but if not, I'll get something else. So um, It's definitely not as bad as some people are wanting it to be. Uh, so, alright guys, until next time, this is Christo saying, uh, well, see you later.